stream. The stream has begun. The stream has begun. We have begun the stream. Oh my God, I did it again. If you're watching this later, uh, you probably wanna jump forward 10 minutes because I start the stream 10 minutes early. Uh, man, I wrote the most ballin' tweet. I wrote a great tweet. Is it saved? No, the one time it's not saved. Man, I can't believe I did that. I wrote the tweet, but once again, I deleted it. It's really not here. It's really not here. Oh, it's there still. Oh, that's great. I really did not want to rewrite that. Okay, if you're here, I'm just posting the tweet like I do every time. Um, and I am changing the title. Jack is here. What's up? Just chilling, man. I'm about to get the situation going here. I actually already wrote the tweet. We're moving ahead. We're moving so far forward on how professional the stream is. We're still gonna hear my voice for one second. Oh, I really jinxed it. Really jinxed the professional level there, but it's all good. I'm gonna paste the link onto Twitter. We're gonna do this thing right now. Let's do it. It's been tweeted. What's up everybody? I'm doing great today. How are you? I'm gonna move the mic really quick. So if you have, I don't know, crazy large headphones on or something, you're gonna get a little sonic ride. Actually, that probably wasn't too loud. Uh, let's make sure everything's chilling. I'm gonna throw the gloves on. I'm going to move some windows around. We're gonna get this thing going. How's your guys October unfolding? Mine's going very well. I feel like I just kind of kicked into fall mode. It's probably what we're gonna, I mean, that is what we're gonna be painting and talking about today. I'm the only one here in my house. My dog might come through and make a guest appearance. Other than that, it's a pretty normal day. Tuesdays are always weird for me because I'm always kind of like gearing up for the show, getting it going. So I kind of just wrap up all the loose ends of work and emails and stuff all day and then figure out what we're gonna do here. This is kind of like my Monday in, in work world, I guess. And then it's kind of like proto Monday. And then tomorrow I really kick into full Monday mode, and get the week started. I'm gonna organize some paints while we're talking. Oh, yo, yesterday was Canadian Thanksgiving? That's sick, actually. I wonder why it's a different day. Do you know? Can I get some esoteric national info from you? That's pretty cool. That's dope. Our Thanksgiving's obviously very far away, so I'm strictly... I'm almost, I'm almost in Halloween mode. Really, I am, actually. I actually really am in Halloween mode. There is a subset, I'm sure if you're here, I'm sure if you're here, you know this. There's a subset of white people who treat Halloween almost like Christmas. I used to work with them, actually. Some of them. Some of their members. And they go so hard on Halloween. And I kinda, I'm kind of, i kind of down, actually. At first, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really that hardcore. But now I kind of am. This year, I'm like, whatever day it is, whatever day it is, I decided today I was like, mm, yeah, I'm in Halloween mode already. I'm in Halloween mode right now. Decided to just turn it on a little bit early. Why not? And I think we're gonna go hard on some fall colors. You probably can't tell because the whole screen's white, but we're a little bit more zoomed out than normal. I wanna go a little bit like looser, frankly like rougher, kind of like painting style today. Hit the fall color situation, but we'll talk about that. We... We'll talk about all that. Got the colors laid out. We're going to need those browns, obviously. Cool. Um, let's see what else we got going on. We don't have that much time before we start. We have like a few minutes. I'm going to poke 
down under the desk. Oh, I'm gonna get some black paint going on. Maybe we'll get the ink situation going down. It is technically Inktober. Someone asked me if I was doing Inktober and I was like, yeah, I'm trying to like hustle some cash right now. So I'm not, I'm not taking the time to do a fun ink drawing every day. But I wish I was. I probably sound really far away. I'm under my desk right now. Let's see if we have any like fall ink colors. We got red going on. This is cool, a top down view for you guys. Got red going on right here. Let's see what else I got going on. I got red orange too. Oh shit. I almost ordered some of these, but they're pretty expensive and they wouldn't have gotten here in time for the show. So I didn't. Cool story, right? Oh, this is already fall color. We got yellow right here. Let's see what else I got under the desk. That's about it. That's about it. A purple, not really a fall color. Maybe in some otherworldly sense. I got butterscotch. That's pretty close to pumpkin. Pretty close. Um, that's all we're gonna need from down here. I have this one item down here. I, I've like never used this. I don't think ever in my whole life. I was in this really tiny art store and I bought this black ink. And it's this black ink. You probably can't even. You can, actually you can see a little bit on the camera. It's this black ink with like glitter in it. And I bought it and I was like, oh, it's really interesting, you know? Yeah. And then I got home and I was like, I'm never going to use this. Under what circumstances ever am I going to use black ink with glitter? And that might have actually been like 10 years ago and I still have this bottle. I probably never even opened it. I bet I've never opened this. Yeah. You can actually see it. It's a little glittery. You can't, you can't really see on the camera. But it's cool. So what else is going down with me? A little pre-show. Nothing else really, man. I'm kind of just, I feel like I'm still getting the ball rolling from getting back traveling. I know that's like really lame. I drew a bunch of really cool stuff, but I put it on Patreon. But uh, I'm not plugging my Patreon. I'm just casually talking with you guys. I drew this really dope picture of St. Pius X, actually. That's kind of been my vibe the last like week or so. I always have some something kicking around my brain that I like to talk to you guys about. And I guess the last week, I've really just been cracking out on like you know, I kind of like poke in these little worlds. I poke in these little pockets and uh, I watched this movie. I can't believe I didn't post about it actually. I didn't even tweet about it. But I put, I watched this movie about, uh, what's your schmood for today? The mood for today is we are going hard on fall colors. That's really the mood. Little memento mori energy, but really honestly, I feel like the fall color situation is what we need to do. Um, I got caught off guard last week because I started the show and then, you know, I, I like interacting with you guys in the chat, you know, and yeah, I know I, I literally have probably watched like 10 or 12 movies my whole life. Um, anyway, yeah, so I started the show and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And everyone in the chat is like, Halloween, fall, it's October. And I was caught really off guard because I was like, wow, yeah, actually, I can't believe I literally didn't think about the fact that it was fall like at all. <laughs> so I kind of just was caught really off guard. And then this week I was like, you know, looking at some Bible stuff and I was like, kind of want to take it back in that direction. And I was like, you know, the thing is, I mean, I'm a painting show. I'm like color boy over here. I really have to do something fall, October related. Like literally, how could I just completely ignore that? So I feel like that's what we're going to do today. I, like I said before, I zoomed the camera out a little bit. So I want to try and go like a little bit bigger and looser and get some like big color situation going on. I really just want to push the color 110%. And if it doesn't really work, it doesn't really work, but you know, whatever. I feel like we're still still feeling everything out, so that's what I want to do today. It is 7 o'clock. It's 7.01. I'm going to pull the trigger. What else was I saying? Oh yeah, I watched the movie. I'll talk about that in a second, though. What else is going on, man? Nothing really else. I'm thinking about my Halloween costume. I have a really dope costume. I don't know if I can talk about it, though. Is that, like, too doxy? I'm going to this party where I have to dress up as, I guess I can talk about that. A lot of people are probably doing this party theme. I'm going to this party where I have to dress up as like a mythological something or other for Halloween. So that's been kind of cool. I got to figure out something cool to be. I think I know what I'm going to do. Anyway, cool story, right? I'm going to a party in two weeks. Great story. It is time. It's 7.01. Am I going to keep the streak of pushing the correct button? Let's see. I'm going to push it right now.
All right, what's up? It's about that time for the painting show. I see Peter in the chat said best time of the week. Such a flattering designation. Such a flattering designation. You know, when I do the show with you guys, I actually, I actually have the number of people watching on my screen covered up because I don't really care. If there's five of you guys, two of you guys, one of you guys, that's cool with me. I actually just spend most of the evening amped to get this started and hang out with you guys. So let's just get it going. Uh, I kind of just want to keep pushing the visual envelope today. So if you were here in the pre-show, you just heard me talk about it. I'll talk about it again in a second. But uh, let's just jump right in. There's a lot I want to talk about. So you know the deal. I'm kind of going to talk about what I have, you know, sort of set up and then poke in the chat, get it going. Um, first things first. Oh, yeah. Intro. The music. Painting show. The band's called Painted Worlds. Check it out. Painted Worlds. It's in the description. It's on Spotify. It's on Bandcamp. That's the plug. The band is called Painted Worlds. All right. So uh, I've really been enjoying. I remembered that because I've really been enjoying the intro. Hitting a book off my shelf. We're going to keep. That's the warm up act for the show every time. And I was looking at my shelf, and like I said, I have actually my whole desk, so you can imagine, I don't like to show because I like to give you, you know, the pleasure of imagining it, but I'm at this desk, right? And then there's another desk behind the camera, and under that desk, it's just full of books. It's probably like 100 or 200 books that I've brought from like my house and that I picked up on the road trip and all this stuff. So there's no shortage of weird books for the intro, but I saw this book, and this is kind of an interesting one that I've had for a really long time. So, uh... I'm not going to go too hard into what this is, but this is something from a philosophical tradition. It's basically like one of the types of Hinduism that came to America. And uh, I was into this for a while. It's called Advaita Vedanta. And I actually am, I'm really kind of not into it now because, you know, most of this stuff, I feel like what I got from it, like there's little bits of like wisdom and stuff that I took away from it. But ultimately there's parts of the worldview that I just think are like, frankly, like not accurate. It's why I, you know, sort of had to keep searching before I eventually became Christian. So uh, I picked up this book and I was like, oh man, I haven't thought about this in a while. And I thought about this first paragraph because out of all the books I've ever read, this first paragraph, I feel like just hit me so hard. And since we're not going to read anything else, I'm just going to read this right now because I feel like if you're watching this, you might be able to resonate with it. And the whole book is structured as like a conversation between this student and this teacher. So the book opens. I am weighed down by doubts, conflict, and a distaste for life. I have experienced what we normally call the worldly pleasures. I have devoted myself to painting. I have taken an active part in certain extremist politics. In other words, I have tried everything. And yet here I am, oppressed by a disgust for everything, by relentless, by, re by restlessness and insecurity. I must also add that I have taken drugs several times. This has debased me even more. I believe I have become addicted to them. I am disgusted with my behavior, but I feel I am trapped within a vicious circle and I do not know how to escape. I cannot possibly go on like this. If I indulge in careless experiences, I feel dulled and alienated. But if I reject experience, I am possessed by a terror of loneliness and emptiness. Often when I am alone, I am overcome by fear. And therefore, I look for the company of others. But this makes me feel even emptier than before. Right? I mean, that's basically how it is, right? So it's funny. I saw this book. I remember living in Brooklyn and being like super confused and all that stuff. So I thought that was a cool opener. Kind of fits the fall vibe. It's kind of been my vibe a little bit. Fall is in the air where it's like you're depressed a little bit because everything's dying, but it's also like kind of beautiful. I don't know. So I felt like we should open up with that little weird book over there. Anyway, that's also a perfect segue because uh, what I want to talk about before I get going is, so I was thinking about fall. I just mentioned it in the beginning. Uh, yeah, someone said I can relate. I think we can all relate. Sort of like searching around for an answer. I tried art. I tried politics. I was just feel so empty inside. Uh, I even tried weird Hindu books I found at like a bookstore in Brooklyn, but none of it worked until I got here to my little rural theological art studio. It's working a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's working a little bit. Hopefully you can relate to that in some capacity. Anyway, though, uh, what I wanted to talk about before I got going right here, so... Yeah, I mentioned it a little bit before, but I didn't go too much into it because I didn't want to repeat myself. So I was prepping for the show, as I often do. I'm like, people are going to come through and watch. I got to prep it, get it going. And I was like, okay, it's fall. Got to hit the fall vibe. It's an art show. So much color, fecund visual material there. And I was looking up Bible verses. I was like, Bible plus autumn. How can I pull this together? And I tried really hard, actually. I looked at a lot of stuff, and it just wasn't really happening. I was, like, there was a few stretch verses, like, about leaves and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, I could kind of push it. Like, you know, I'm very uh, 
verbose. I can probably tie anything into like anything else. But I had sort of a different idea. And I was kind of just thinking about this. So I'm not going to ramble on, but I'm just going to give you this little idea before we jump into the visual situation. I was driving around and I was looking at all the fall colors. You know, where I am, it's like orange and yellow and red and everything we're going to kind of jump into right now. Um, and I was thinking, I was like, you know, it's really interesting and kind of weird why the season of things dying is so beautiful. Like it sounds like it makes sense if you just kind of accept it as like, axiomatic you're like well yeah everything's dying so it's really beautiful which is kind of just i feel like how i and most people kind of like just accept it but if you actually think about it it doesn't really make that much sense and it doesn't actually really apply to other parts of life you know i was driving around and i was like you know people aren't really like that like no offense to people but when a person is kind of like right before they're dying that's not really when they're the most beautiful right like maybe you could push it in like a spiritual way but i don't know it's kind of a stretch and i was really thinking about it and i was like you know why is that the case? And I couldn't really come up with an answer. I was like, maybe it's just this weird, like, you know, thing that kind of syncs up for some reason. But in the studio here, I was working on some stuff. I was working on this project uh, about like the liturgical year and sort of like the whole like Christian calendar. And it was interesting because I was thinking, you know, maybe it's the case that that, that is the case, you know, that, that when we have the season of death, it's like the most beautiful. I always remember I watched this video once and there's this really old nun. She's kind of almost kind of like bald actually. It's like French nun. And at her nunnery, they make cheese, right? And she was talking about making cheese and she was like, you know, it's, it's kind of symbolic for me because you have this fermentation and all this bacteria is dying and stuff like that. And I close the lid on this cheese barrel or whatever it is. And then I come back later and after everything's died in there, new life has come up. And that's like what the cheese is, whatever cheese she was making, that was like the process. I'm not like a cheesemonger. And there was this shot of her like eating this, this cheese. And she was like, that's oh, so sweet. You know, she's looking at the camera. She's like, it's so sweet. And she's like, for me, this is sort of like an earthly manifestation of the promise of life after death, that these, this, this whole fermentation death process happens. And then I get this sweet cheese out of it, you know? And I was thinking, you know, the seasons, maybe that's why the season of death is so beautiful, but in life, it's not really like that. Cause in life, like when things die, you kind of just have to be like, all right, well, I guess it's going to come around eventually. But in the seasons, you know it's going to come around eventually. So maybe that's why in the season of death, because we know it's going to come around to spring and summer eventually, it is that beautiful manifestation of death instead of like the just fallen world, like fucked up manifestation of death where like, you know, an animal dies and it's not beautiful, but then the trees are dying. It is beautiful because you know the trees are going to come back eventually. I don't know. That's kind of the best way I could put that idea I was thinking about, but I was wondering why fall, the season of death is so beautiful. That was the answer I came up with, but maybe there is no answer. Maybe that was a good answer. Maybe it wasn't, but that was the intro answer for the show. Anyway, what we're going to do right now, it's funny. So I'm talking into the mic and like, I can see the chat, but when you're talking to people in real life, you get, you can see their faces and see what they're thinking about what you're saying. But here I'm just kind of talking into my room. So I hope that made sense. I feel like it did. Anyway, though, we're going to jump right in right now, and maybe you can tell, maybe you can't if you watch the show religiously, not religiously, but that would be a good pun word. You can probably tell, maybe not because it's all white, but the camera's a little bit more zoomed out than normal. You can probably tell if I take one of the brushes out, we're a little bit more zoomed out than we normally are. And uh, what I want to do, I honestly just want to take a little time and, like I've been saying, push the color situation. So what we're going to do, I might, uh, should I put down a border? I guess I'll put down a border while I'm talking with you guys. We're not going to go that far out of the beaten territory right now. And uh, I kind of just want to get in that zone of fall colors. And I think what we're going to do as a basis for that, like I said, we're going to jump back into the Bible eventually, but I didn't want to, you know, just shoehorn it in. I found some verse in, I think it was in Ezekiel that had like leaves and vines dying. And I was like, this is kind of related, but also has nothing to do with anything really. So we're going to jump back into that eventually, but for now, I think we're just going to make kind of a visual, symbolic abstraction of a theme called Memento Mori. And in case you are unfamiliar with that particular manifestation of Christian art, I'm also stoked because on the show we get to talk about Christian art, whether it's the themes or specific works. And honestly, I mean, that's like one of the coolest parts of Christian Christianity just in general. I mean, we have the dopest art. In case you haven't heard, in case you haven't seen it, I mean, we're just killing it. And we have been. 
since the beginning. I mean, it's just one of the coolest parts of Christendom, I guess you could say, that doesn't really get pumped so much. So anyway, one of the visual art traditions that we have in our little repertoire is something called Memento Mori, and that is a style of painting. It's not really a style. It's more like a theme. It's a thematic style, I guess you could say, uh, where the painting is all about the fact that things die. But instead of just painting like straight up dead bodies or something like that, it's actually an interesting parallel because in Buddhism and Eastern art, where I have some other knowledge, uh, when they do art about death, they literally will just paint like a straight up dead body or something. Um, there's actually a type of Buddhist uh, painting in Japan where someone would literally just go to like a graveyard and like look at dead bodies like decaying and like paint them in like stages of death and stuff. And uh, it's pretty cool, honestly. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> but you're not going to hang it in the living room. And Memento Mori is kind of a different take on that. Instead of just straight up painting actual literal death, um, it's usually objects and things like that that kind of represent death or tie into death symbolically. So like sometimes in Memento Mori, it's usually a still life. It's actually almost always a still life. Let's say it'll be like a skull. That's pretty obviously related to death. And then maybe a clock because it's like, oh, time, you're on the clock. And then maybe it'll be like a piece of fruit and a piece of decaying fruit um, or like a dead flower and like some dead leaves or a moth maybe, like moth and rust uh, doth corrupt in the Bible. So it's pretty cool. Kind of actually perfectly fits with what we generally do on the show where we have lots of symbols all tied together pointing to a common theme. So that's what we are going to do right now. I got some tags in the chat really quick. Halloween vibes up in here. Yes. Uh, seasons perfectly match the liturgical calendar. Autumn is when we're surrounded by death, but harvest food to prepare for winter. We meditate on death to prepare for the birth of Christ. Yes, that is true, actually. Bible is cool and all, but a full-on Samhain painting hour would be dope. Yeah, we'll hit the Halloween themes. I don't know if we're going to go full... Well, I know. I actually know because I host the show. Uh, we're not going to go full pagan style, but um, I saw this quote. It's from a Catholic philosopher, I'm pretty sure, that said... Uh, Paganism is the other Old Testament of the church. Did we talk about that last week? And I don't know if it's like 100% true, but I thought it was a cool idea. And there are a lot of um, themes and stuff like that that I feel like we could go into a little bit. So maybe we'll tie a little bit of that stuff at another, at another time. We have two more October episodes until Halloween. So let's just do it. Okay. So I wanted to flip the script a little bit on how we are kind of engaging with the picture plane right now. I'm actually going to sit up in my chair a little bit. Because normally, obviously, what we've been doing is kind of like tight and controlled. And that is what I wanted to subvert a little bit in terms of what we're doing right now. So instead of, again, the weapons metaphor is always what I go to. I think it's the most clear. Instead of the sniper scope, starting with the sniper scope, and then we get a little bit of the flamethrower, uncontrolled, you know, napalm, fire bombing. How much do I want to push this metaphor? Action going on. I want to start on that side of things and kind of get some colors going on in the background and stuff like that. So I'm just going to grab, there's one last thing I need, which is these paper towels right here. Boom. All right. So let's just do it. I want to push the watery, chaotic uh, nature of what's going on. So let's just throw on some background colors. I am going to just wet the top over here. And kind of what I want is just like straight up orange, just like coming in to the scene right over here. And in my mind, maybe we'll have some red coming up from the bottom and yellow. And then we'll have this scene of like red, orange and yellow that we can kind of paint into. In case you don't know, those are pretty much the classic fall colors in case you live in a place where the leaves never change. So normally we don't start this way and I'm kind of actually wondering how, uh, how much it'll affect the rest of the painting and how it's going to go, but it's a little bit more exciting when we all don't know exactly how it's going to go. It's kind of how art is. And by we all, especially me, the one who's actually doing it. So I'm kind of torn. Should I just wet the whole page? Let's just do it. I don't normally go in this way, but let's just do it. So I actually am just going to wet the whole page mostly. And if you're familiar with the materials I'm using, that's why it's a block of watercolor because now all the water is pulling on all the fibers of the paper. So instead of the paper warping and getting all wiggly, it's taped down on the sides. So it'll be fine. I'm gonna try and leave this big brush as clean as possible. It's not really gonna work, but I'm gonna try it anyway. And I'm just gonna come in with some orange. I have a few oranges here. 
The other orange is more transparent. It's orange lake deep. If you see that word lake in color names when you go to the paint store, it's because uh, I'm pretty sure it comes from a Dutch word. The Dutch made a lot of the best paint back in the day. And uh, I think it's some word in Dutch that sounds like the word for transparent. So if you go to a paint store and see the lake colors, those are the transparent colors, actually. And uh, I don't really know how this is gonna handle, but let's just go in. What I want is, see, I'm not really getting the effect I want already. I just want it just like flowing out into the page, but you can see that's not really the effect I'm getting. It's kind of just staying a little bit close to where I'm putting it down. You can see it's fuzzing out a little bit, so we're getting a little bit of that that energy, but I want I want big. I want huge waves of color. That's what we are going for, and we are gonna get it. I'm wondering if these liquid colors are gonna give me what I'm looking for. These are concentrated, it's like hyper-concentrated color. This actually is a pretty cool effect over here. But uh, let's see if this is giving me what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's a little bit more in line with what I was thinking. I'm just gonna come in and just kind of drop these bits of color in over here. And I kind of like that dotty kind of pattern that I just got. This actually looks really nice. I'm actually gonna put another dot in here really quick just to get the, yeah, there we go. Nice. And from the bottom up, I want red. I want some red just coming up from the bottom. It'll be kind of like our darkest color. I don't exactly know, you know, I don't know if we're gonna put all the items that we're talking about, like Memento Mori style on a table, or if it's gonna be more of a straight. I'm loving this trail over here, by the way. It looks really dope. Uh, we're just gonna wing it. We're just gonna wing it, let's see. And I'm just gonna grab the red. There's a red orange and a red, but I'm gonna go with red. I'm just gonna go for it right now. Maybe I'll regret that later, maybe I won't. And I'm just gonna come in with the streak right now. Okay. Wow, it's really creepy, actually. It's almost like blood on the bottom. It's interesting because, so you can see, you know, again, I want to encourage people to do art when I'm doing this. So normally I, if, it, not normally, but if I had been working with these materials a lot, I'd be very familiar with them. So I would have known like, oh, when you hit the red with the water, this is how it's gonna behave. But I haven't used these tools in a while, so. But it's all good, it's kind of the fun. So that was the red, I'm actually gonna grab the red orange right now and see if maybe I can kind of get them to fade into each other. Okay, maybe I'm not, let's see. Okay, it is not coming through the tube, so we might have to take some drastic action. Hmm, we are gonna take some drastic action because I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna pour it out of the bottle straight up on the page. Nice. Cool. Cool. Okay, and I'm gonna come in with my brush a little bit here. I like how natural it is, but I do want the colors. I don't want them to be totally separated. So I can go in. Nice. So actually, I have to move the camera a tiny bit. Okay, and here I'm really hitting that rule that I'm talking about all the time, where I don't wanna overwork it. I really wanna keep the kind of natural look. It's really like a tension. It's like a tension between I want to keep the natural look, but I also need a flat field to work against. So like this white streak, ultimately when I come down and put some stuff over it, it's going to be too distracting. So it looks cool, but I'm just going to come in. And I'm going to try and get us a little bit of an edge on the bottom. Yeah, cool. Okay. Okay, and this right over here, it looks really dope. This is literally never gonna dry. I don't know if you can see. You can see if I move the light, it's it's like literally a pool of water. The paper towels always look really cool when you do this. So I'm actually gonna come through and, and I'm gonna dry this up a little bit. Let's see, so yeah, you can see it's literally like someone spilled water. I mean, because you, you've seen what I've been doing. That's kinda, kinda is what I've been doing. Okay, nice, this is looking dope. And as cool as this looks, I'm gonna try and get a little bit of the color up here too. So I'm actually just gonna come through and dab this with the paper towels. Oh, I'm shaking the camera, my bad. Yeah, this is looking dope, this is looking dope. Okay, um, I'm gonna do something with this area over here and then maybe we can kinda like start painting into it. I will position the camera so I don't get too much glare and stuff. But for now, yeah, this is good. Okay. 
I have one other dye color. So again, you know, you kind of work with what you have. Very, very few of us are ever gonna have like, you know, the full, full setup of every single color and every material. So I have this other color here, it's called butterscotch. Actually, normally I used to have this kind of like yellow highlightery color, and that's what I thought I would grab right now, but it's really not fall. It really is like full on like highlighter color. So uh, let's see what this butterscotch color is. And this is also different, it probably won't really matter, but it's an alcohol based ink. So uh, it might behave a little differently, it might not. And just to make sure all the colors get married together, I'm gonna grab this orange and I'm just gonna come in right over here on the edge get us a little bit of that just so it's not like three totally different like zones i kind of want it to uh come together a little bit more than that and this bottle has its own little like topper thing so let's see i'm just gonna come in like this okay oh nice perfect and i can kind of drop it back in here I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit. I don't want it to have too much of like a crazy weird look. I mean, it's as cool as it is. So I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit. Yeah, you can see actually the alcohol ink like dries up instantly and kind of pushes away the regular paint. But if it doesn't look good, we can paint over it. We'll see how it goes. Huh, interesting. It gave us a really interesting feel over here. Mm, I might paint over it. It kind of looks dope. It kind of looks dope. Uh, I'm kind of torn right now because I could, you know, the, the alcohol inks kind of, they kind of like push through everything else. So I could come around and put them in more. I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to leave the texture a little bit there, but I am going to obfuscate it a little bit just because, I don't know, I don't want to lock myself too much into like one feel or one, one kind of vibe too much right now. Although I do like it actually. I do like it. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to move the lights a lot this episode, but it's all good. Okay, cool. And lastly, what I'm gonna do is, I don't know, this white zone in the middle will be cool, but I'm just gonna kind of pull out the colors a little bit. I'm just gonna pull them out a little bit. I also just kind of want to see what, what'll happen when I pull these out. And we're definitely gonna start with the skull. <laughs> Obviously, we're gonna start with the skull. How could that not be the case? Um, and I got a few options right now. You know, I could be totally, completely insane and drop some black right into this right off the bat. I'm kind of torn about doing that. I can't really tell if I should or I should not. Maybe I will. Maybe I will do that. So I'm gonna grab actually this black ink right here. Let's just go for it. I mean, if, it, if, it, if, if I put the black in and it doesn't look good, honestly, I can just tear the page out and keep it moving. I feel like it's more fun to like, you know, kind of go nuts and see how it turns out rather than try and like play it safe, right? I mean, why are we here to play it safe? Not really. So I'm just gonna throw, let's throw a little black down. Let's throw a little black down. Um, this might take it from long painting to short painting because I really don't, I moved the lights by the way, it's a little bit dimmer, I feel like it's okay. Um, just because I feel like it's better for you guys if you can actually see what I'm doing rather than have the shine and stuff. I'm still kind of figuring out the camera, but I'm looking at it on my screen and I think we're fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in with the black right now. And this is gonna be interesting because parts of the painting are very wet and parts of it are not. So, <sighs> let's see how this black, how this black behaves right now. And uh, let's just go for it. I have to make sure my gloves are really high up. I feel like I can kind of get a skull in this little zone right here. I mean, I can do whatever I want. So I have no idea how this is gonna act when I put this down right now. It could fan out all over the place. Oh, nice. Cool. Cool. So we're just kind of painting this black right in. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Great. And uh, it's kind of interesting what I'm doing right now because I actually don't know how much the lines are gonna fuzz out. Uh, it doesn't really matter with my style too much because I can kind of adjust what I was gonna do and paint the skull a little bit, a little bit fatter, honestly. Just a little fat skull over here. Come around a little bit down over here, yeah. And I'm actually gonna exploit this kind of feathery 
blackness and we're kind of just going to get a little shadow over here on the skull. Memento Mori is a very like Northern European thing. They did in Italy too, actually. It's not really straight Northern European, but it's kind of nice because it's really like a European Christian thing. You know, they did it in Protestant countries. They did it in Catholic countries too. And I'm going to see if I can come in just with the black eyes. Let's just see. Normally I paint the eyes in huge. It's also really cool because part of what you're seeing here, it's almost like an electrical pattern, right? Part of what you're seeing here is the fibers of the paper. I'm using this rough watercolor paper. So the fibers are massive. Uh, in case you don't know what I mean by that, it basically means like if you, took a, if you have a sheet of printer paper or something around, I'm going to brush this out so it looks a little bit more like a skull. Yeah, that looks tight. That looks really tight. Um, if you have a piece of, so I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep going with the black. If we just go hard with the black and wrap this up in five, 10 minutes, then we'll just do another one. I have a ton of paper here. Um, so right now I'm just going off the cuff right now, obviously with you guys. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is kind of like memento mori fall style. I could put in a pumpkin. Pumpkins are supposed to be orange though. I don't really have a lot of orange here and the water's drying. So I'm just going to paint in some grapes. Kind of fits the biblical theme a little bit. That means maybe we can get like a glass of wine or something in here. I don't really like painting wine because I used to drink wine all the time and now I don't. But if it suits the picture, I will. And I thought grapes would be cool because sometimes when you paint grapes, you can kind of come in and like shade them a little bit. So we'll see. And I loaded up the brush. Yeah, let's see. And maybe I'll, this is kind of where I have to decide if I'm going to have them like on a table or like what. So I'm thinking it's kind of a dope look if you get them like hanging off the table. So that's kind of what I'm going to do right now. Yeah. Cool. All right. So what was I saying? Oh yeah. So part of what you're seeing, this looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like a blackberry. That's what it looks like to me. I was also eating blackberries before. So I'm going to see, let's see if I'm going to get, so I'm going to try and, I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm imagining maybe there's like a table, you know, and I'm also looking, that looks good. That's perfect. And I got to move the light again because we're too shiny. All right, nice. I'm going to come in and just get this kind of uh, stem on here. Yeah. Perfect. Oh yeah, the fibers. So what I meant by the fibers is like, um, if you, if you have a piece of printer paper near you or something and you tear it, um, it'll just tear cleanly, right? Like you'll see tiny, tiny, tiny little fibers. But with this, if you tore it, the fibers are long. Um, they're like, you know, they can get to be like half an inch long or something. Okay. Um, I kind of want to get like a, a flower or something up in here. Cause then we can kind of, maybe kind of, you can kind of maybe come in. Oh, it's so nice. The fibers are staying wet, like for so long. Um, so I'm kind of just going to come in. Obviously, I didn't really plan this out. I thought that we'd have more time. I mean, you know, we're going to do the full show. I just meant like for this particular image. So let's just kind of go for it. And I do want to look at the chat, but I also just want to see. Let's kind of just see. It's kind of fun if we experiment a little bit. I've been really pumping the rose so hard. That's like my preeminent like mystical symbol right now. More so than usual. If you see the pictures I got coming out soon, it's literally just like roses, roses, roses. Okay, cool. And a little dry brush. I think it's okay. Cool. I'm kind of feeling this style a little bit. The next one we'll do, obviously we're going to do more than one here. The next one we'll do, we'll use color instead of black and that'll really change it up. So this is kind of like the warm up now. You can imagine if I was painting this in instead of just like working straight with the black, it would be very different. Although this does look pretty hot, honestly. It actually does look pretty cool. We can get a kind of moth in here. Moth is very like Halloween style. Let's see, I got some chat things I have to check out. Someone checked out the etymology of the word lake. That's dope. I'm gonna throw in a moth right here. Like again, moth and rust doth corrupt. I guess we're gonna go straight black lines on this background. Someone said, do you partake of communion given your non-wine-ness? Uh, it's a really good question, actually. Um, well, normally I would, I guess. I wouldn't really feel tempted to like, you know, if we're talking like alcoholic style, I wouldn't feel tempted to like start drinking again, I don't think, from doing communion. But, wow, look how the grape turned out. 
Isn't that interesting? So this is, this is like the warm up one, but you can see the lines, they just keep fuzzing. So actually for the next one, we'll kind of like rush, not rush through it, but we'll kind of make this like swiftly. You know, I have to anticipate how much fuzz is gonna happen, or I have to like strategically dry with the uh, paper towel beforehand. So let's kind of let's move this one along a little bit. If that's how the grape is gonna look, we're gonna move it along a little bit. Uh, okay, table style, I'm just gonna kind of come in and uh, paint it in. Oh yeah, anyway though, the thing is, yeah, I like actually, it's more like a health thing, so I'm like not supposed to have anything with alcohol in it. So I don't really know what I would do for communion. I don't go to a church yet though is the thing, so. Whenever I start doing that, I'll have to explain to the priest that I can't have wine and my wife can't eat bread, and he'll be like, bro, are you serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, and yeah, Peter M said, what a waning moon? Yeah, actually, so once again, you guys have read my mind. I'm going to throw in this window right over here. It's a pretty classic Owen Cyclops move. Throw it in the window. And you can always remember if the moon's getting bigger or smaller because it'll make a B for bigger or a D for dying. So we want the dying moon. So we're just going to come in. Drop that in. Boom. And then I'm going to load this brush up and we're just going to black this out. I'm trying to leave a few stars, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not a big deal. Cool. Perfect. And I should get a bigger brush, but maybe I want some of the orange showing through. Maybe it'll read like stars a little bit. This looks pretty sick. This is looking pretty sick. Boom. Boom. Someone said that skull looks dope. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting. So someone asked about the communion thing. You know, like I said, I always have topics on my mind and I like talking about them with you guys. In case anyone's worried about it. I don't think anyone's worried about it, but eventually we are going to return to hitting specific Bible themes and stuff. It hasn't. It's not like that theme has gone away from the show. We've just had reason to do a few other themes back to back to back, but we are going to go back to that. Anyway, though. So yeah, I've really been thinking about like the whole church thing, not in like a interdenomination thing. I'm not trying to like start that conversation, but I really just do feel like I'm very called to like be part of like a spiritual community just in terms of like the day to day, you know, so that's something I've thought about a lot recently. Um, it's kind of interesting because, you know, again, I'm really not trying to like start that whole conversation right now, but you know, people on Twitter, especially where we hang out, are very like, oh, let's argue about, you know, which denomination is better and stuff. But it's interesting because I feel so kind of like desperately in need of like a spiritual community that it's funny. It's like reminded me like, oh, yeah, like we're supposed to be in like churches together for like actual like practical reasons of not like succumbing to despair and stuff. Not this like random shit that we like argue about online. I threw in a clock. Maybe it's too literal. It's black, but whatever. Kind of just that warm-up one. I do like it. I'm feeling the loose style. And you can see as we've gone all as we've gone along, so like the technical aspect of what's happening. So the fibers are drying. So you can see over here, remember we started up here actually? It's a perfect illustration. We started up here. So it's drier up here. So when I paint in here, you know, it stays crisper over here. But uh over here, it was obviously wetter for whatever reason. Maybe it was a bad example, but for for whatever reason over here it's way more wet. So you can see these other things kind of fuzzed out. And it's kind of cool because uh, if you get really into painting in this way, you can kind of use that to your advantage. Like, you know, if you're painting something and you're like strategically using how uh, different parts of the paper are drying or not. All right. That was really fun, but it was just the warm up, I guess. I guess that was just the warm up. Okay, so I'm going to come through and uh, cut this off the block. So. I think it's dry enough that I can do it. I'm just going to go for it because I want to keep the show moving. So actually you can see, it's kind of cool for you guys to see, I guess. I'm going to show the side over here. Make sure I'm not going to dump like black ink all over my floor. But you can see the black on the side. So that's glue and the block is taped together. So it's a bunch of pieces of paper and the glue is all on them. But up at the top, you can see there's one little piece right here where there's no glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a razor blade and I'm gonna use the back of it, and I'm going to cut that page off. And I'm actually gonna use a box cutter that I took from a job I used to work at. I didn't steal it, it was an accident. And I couldn't bring it back. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this off right here. If you've been really OG watching since like day one, then you saw the materials episode, but if not, with the blocks, it's funny because if you're ever in any kind of like art school or something, what always happens is someone gets a block and they don't understand why and they're like, Whoa, I can't get any of the pages. It's taped together. Oh no. And like someone will just be like really confused why they bought like one big rectangular prism of paper for like 50 bucks. They'll be kind of like mad about it and you have to show them. Okay, so I'm just going to peel this off. Normally I would do this a little bit more carefully, but uh, it's not a big deal because since I'm tearing this off, it will probably not dry flat anyway. Bam! Cool. That was really solid. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure there's not bleeding through on the back. Huh, you know, it's interesting actually. Can I flip this over? Am I gonna be so brazen? I'll flip it over, yeah. So it's actually kind of interesting. Nothing bled through. This is really, really thick paper. It's actually really expensive, this whole block of paper. It's called Arches. I mean, I bought it a long time ago, but I bet it was like 70 bucks. It was really expensive. Um, but you can see only the alcohol ink went through the paper. So it's kind of interesting, you know? You get more familiar with your materials and you notice how they all have different like material properties. <sighs> anyway, that was really dope. Okay, we'll call it the warm up and then we'll uh, we'll settle into something something a little bit a little bit more uh, a little bit more long term. Okay, so I'm gonna throw in a border here. That was fun though. That was really fun. Perfect example of what I was trying to push for got out of my system, the kind of like loose craziness. I'm gonna bring a little bit of light back. Cool, just for the drawing. And uh, we'll do something a little bit different now. Kind of in the same vein, same vein, same show. But we'll kind of change it up a little bit. And I'm gonna catch up on the chat. Uh, waning moon, yeah, we hit that one. Maybe we'll start with the moon or something this time. It's also like a Marian symbol, which is nice. Um, that skull looks dope, yes. Someone said, if you partake of communion, you don't have to drink the blood. Yeah, I guess I could just take the bread, right? And then my wife can just take the, uh, we can split it. It's really funny because I was actually kind of like really worried about that. Not that I was really worried about it, but I was like, you know, I'm not really supposed to eat bread either, but I can, I can eat bread. It's not a big deal. And then someone was like, yeah, well, you know, if you have that problem, like, you know, God made you that way. So it's not like he's going to be, have like an issue with you not doing it. It's like, wow, what is, what a simple, good answer. <laughs> You wife can take gluten-free communion wafers. A woman I know brings them with her. Whoa, that's crazy. That's crazy. I would have liked to have been there when they wrote that into the uh, liturgical laws. I've noticed some people have become super LARPing and start taking like a 16th century, start talking like a 16th century peasant once they publicly choose a domination. <laughs> that's really funny. Okay. So I'm working, just throwing down this frame. And yeah, otherwise, I uh, I guess aesthetically, aside from this stuff, the other aesthetic thing I've been poking into is I did, uh, I was actually drawing a bunch of like priests' robes and kind of liturgical items and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, there's just something so interesting to me about the, we talk about it a lot, and then again, I kind of never bring it up on Twitter because then people want to like, you know, give me their like politicized view of it, but just find something so interesting about like modernism in the church and like modernism like infiltrating the church and stuff and i mentioned it before but i i mean that in, like the most neutral way possible i'm saying that in terms of like it being a historical phenomenon and uh i drew this picture of saint pius the 10th and it looks sick and i was reading something he wrote and he was talking about how modernism is like the synthesis of all heresies and it was just such like a galaxy brain moment where i was like man there's something here there's something deeper about like my, like we read that passage in the beginning like I'm I have this like issue with like society and how modern society is and here's this guy who's talking about how modernism is like the synthesis of all heresies and I feel really stuck in like modernity it's like a hundred years after that and it kind of I don't know man it's just really interesting anyway there's something deeper to unpack there for sure that I'm sure some of us will figure out eventually anyway though Let's, uh, how do we want to start this one going on? Now that we got that kind of like 100% totally loose uh, fire thrower, fire thrower, flame thrower, uncontrolled out of our system, what's more interesting is let's try and land 
in the middle, which is kind of the hard part, but we're gonna try and do it right now. So if we have on one end, everything's 100% tight controlled, the other end, what just happened, let's try and land somewhere in the middle where we are strategically using the chaos that I just deployed strategically. Instead of 100% chaos, let's try and rein it in a little bit. Rain it, rain it in a little bit. Uh, kind of got to choose a brush. I'm a little torn between this guy. This guy might be a little big, but this guy might be a little small. Maybe we'll use them together. So I'm going to wipe the black off this brush. It's going to take a second just because we're working with color. I got to make sure I get 100% of the black off the brush because otherwise all the colors will be dark. We also almost landed in fall color scheme, but that wasn't really exactly what I was going for. So I'm going to try and push the legit fall colors a little bit more. Fall colors are really kind of dark. There's a dark, dark element there um, that we didn't really get with the radiant watercolors and stuff. Someone said this might be a bit personal, but the most memento mori thing I've seen in my life when my dad was dying. It was brutal. Yeah. He insisted on picking out his own urn and buying it with his own money. Damn, dude. Thank you for sharing. Yes, that is very intense. Yeah, it's intense, man. Yeah, I was talking about it on the show a while ago. Sometime last, sometime at the beginning of the year, I was gonna say last year. It feels like 50 years have uh, passed this year. But yeah, when my grandpa died, it was very like memento mori. It wasn't in fall; it was in spring, though. But uh, it's just interesting, man. You know. And then it's also interesting because I do the rosary. I, I was praying the rosary today. Tuesday's the sorrowful mysteries. So of course, right before I get on with you guys, I'm like hitting myself with that. <laughs> and. Uh, that's interesting. It's also very like, even the Hail Mary prayer, it, I was thinking about it, even the, you know, Ave, the Hail Mary prayer has a memento mori element to it because the end of the prayer is pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. So it's kind of built into it. I mean, that's obvious, but it's something interesting I was thinking about. Anyway, speaking of it, uh, normally I got to dial it back, but every, we were just talking about it. it's Halloween fall. Memento Mori. We're talking about it. So uh, this is the time to pump the skull thing. This is this is it. If we're going to ever pump the skull situation, this is the moment right now. And uh, I got to decide what line color I'm going to use. Part of me, I'm a little torn here. Part of me wants to use um, like indigo or like a really dark color like that for the line work in the skull, but part of me wants to go full fall and use this dark red. I can't really tell. This is gonna be a little bit too light. I'm worried once we start pushing the fall colors, it's gonna get a little bit lost in there. So I'm gonna compromise with myself. And instead of indigo, we'll use burnt umber. Some of the colors, once you uh, kind of get going hard in like the uh, color situation, some of the colors are so dark, they almost function. I don't wanna say they function as black because they certainly don't function as black in and of themselves, but they're so dark that they're kind of in another category. They almost, it's like it's like if there if there there was no black in the picture, maybe the, maybe then they would function as black. I could put it that way. Like I could make a picture where burnt umber is all the line color, and uh, that would work well. So I'm gonna go in uh, on the dry paper. I'm tempted to wet it, but like I said, we're trying to do controlled chaos. What I'm really thinking is I'll paint in the skull. Then maybe I'll wet around the skull and then come in with the fall colors or something. So let's just come in with the skull. Just looking at the screen just to make sure I'm lined up. Well, yeah, Our Lady of Sorrows has, a per has been a personal devotion to me for a while. Emo vibes, <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, it kind of does though, for real. Okay, and I'm not gonna make it too big because I wanna make sure we have room to get everything going. Perfect. Someone says you gotta be in a state of grace when you die. That's what they tell me. That's what they're telling me. Oh yeah, I watched a movie. I was gonna talk about that too. It actually really fits in really well with everything. Um, I watched a movie and it was the movie that SSPX made about Archbishop Lefebvre. <laughs> Sorry. And his life. And it was funny because for me it's like, you know, the whole story, the whole situation. I mean, I know we have people of like all different backgrounds and persuasions and everything in the uh, audience. Some people are Catholic, some people are not, some people are all different kinds of things. It's all good, but whatever you, however you feel about it, either way, 
for me, it's a very, it's like very exciting. It's like very like, like, oh my God, like, you know, they, they had this council and then there was this bishop and he didn't want to go along with it. And he, you know, I'm oversimplifying and he like consecrated these priests, but was he allowed to do it? And all the hierarchy and oh my God, he's like in Africa and he's traveling to Europe and he's, oh my God, this organization is like going rogue. It's like a very exciting story, you know? So I was like, oh man, this is going to be awesome. They made a movie about this and my wife loves movies. So I was like, oh dude. And like you guys said, wow, Owen's watching a movie. I was like, yo, I found a movie. We're going to watch it. It's going to be sick. She's like, okay, cool. You know, I told her about it. She was like, yeah, it sounds really cool. Like I'm down. So I rented this movie. It cost me $3. It was worth it. But like the way I just told you the story where you kind of like was hyping up my voice and getting it going really was not that kind of movie. It was kind of like the kind of movie that you would see like in a museum. Like, you know, if you went to a museum and there was like one of those dark rooms and you poked in and it's like, the movie starts every 35 minutes. Learn about Archbishop Lefebvre and his life and work. And like there's two old people sitting in there like looking at a museum map, like waiting for the movie to start. It was like that kind of movie. <laughs> so it was good. It was cool. I mean, like I enjoyed it. But, you know, it started out, like, really slow, and it's like, Archbishop Lefebvre was born in 18-whenever to two French parents. And I'm like, okay, this is just the beginning. Like, it's going to pick up. Like, wait till the council. Ha and then, like, 45 minutes later, I was like, it's not going to pick up. It's not going to It's not gonna become dramatic. <laughs> it was really funny. It was really, really cool. I'm not like shitting on the movie. It was just funny going in being like, oh my God, like I can't wait. And then I was like, oh, it's not that kind of movie. Um, but it was kind of cool. And that's been a little bit where my head's at, I guess you could say. Um, just poking into that whole world and how it interestingly kind of like is a parallel and, you know, dovetails with a lot of like other interesting things that uh, I think about and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to wet... The outside over here. It is a really cool story. I mean, I feel like someone, like, there's got to be a dramatic movie made of it, right? Or something. I mean, it is a really crazy story where the guy, I mean, in case anyone doesn't, doesn't know what I'm talking about, basically after Vatican II, I'm going to, like, really oversimplify. So if someone, you know, goes to SSPX, they're going to be like, oh, my God, that's not what it's like at all. But I'm just going to oversimplify a little bit. Um, but, yeah, basically after Vatican II, he kind of, uh, Wait, hold on. So I'm going to just drop in these, this color right over here. And I'm hoping it kind of expands out. Perfect. So you can see I've created this little wet, like, container for the colors. That looks really tight. That looks really tight. And I'm going to come under and throw down a little bit of orange in here. Just a little bit. Perfect. Perfect. Hmm, I'm gonna come around a little bit just so it doesn't look like blood coming like out from under the skull. Not exactly going for that vibe. Okay. Boom. It's pretty tight. I'm gonna come around fully and put the red all the way around. <sighs> nice. I got a super chat. Thank you. I'm humbled by your super chat. I will accept it. It's been that kind of time in the studio trying to hustle some cash. Uh, what are some other good Christian movies? That is a really good question. I have probably only seen about 10 movies in my life, so I am not the person to answer that. I'm not really a movie person. But I see you said not only a question for Owen for the chat also. So if anyone has any good movie recommendations, Chat Noir, very appropriate name, is wondering. Uh, on my end, I've only seen kind of like the more like learny ones, the ones that are made to like teach you stuff, which I feel like is cool, but you know, often really isn't exactly what people are looking for when they want to watch a movie. Um, okay. So I want to, I will, I will continue to answer your question, but I want to, I'm feeling this ring thing that I got going on here and I'm wondering how much I can push that. I'm just gonna come back around again and make another ring on the outside. So I watched the Lutheran movie, like the Lutheran American society made a movie about Martin Luther's life. It's probably literally the most like controversial person I could ever possibly mention, but I did watch the movie. Uh, I know the Fatima movie is out. The Fatima movie is out. Uh, I didn't watch that, but I heard it's cool. I actually do really want to watch that. I just honestly don't really have 10 bucks. I mean, I have 10 bucks, but I'm just going to wait. Maybe I'll use your super chat. 
but I heard that that's really cool. And there also is a Russian, look at me being so woke centrist right now. I named a movie from Protestantism and Catholicism and Orthodoxy because there also is a movie about Russian icon painters that I've really been meaning to watch. It's like some crazy, I heard it's like three or four hours or something. I don't know if that's true, but it's really long. Uh, about Russian icon painters that I really want to watch too. But I'm sure other people have better recommendations than me. Okay, so this is looking dope. I'm gonna shade in the skull a little bit. And then I kinda wanna get a little bit of a leaf motif going in. Someone asked last week a really good question, like when do I, how do I decide when to go like 3D versus like 2D? And this is kind of a good example. I just think it would be cool to shade in a little bit on the skull and kind of push that like, is it 2D, is it 3D kind of like element a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And uh, I'm actually imagining, I've done a lot of drawing of like skull models and stuff like that. So it's kind of what I'm imagining right now. Like they have this kind of like bump up at the top of the head. You can also feel, when you're drawing this kind of thing, you can also feel your own skull. Like I know that right in here, if you actually feel, you know, you don't need to touch your face if you're doing something, but if you feel in here and like the inner eyes, like where your eyes come in to where your nose is, that's kind of like the darkest part because that's where you can actually feel it comes in the most. And then underneath, like under here, where I'm painting right now, your cheekbones kind of like come out in this very particular way. So I'm gonna shade underneath here, just a little bit. Maybe a little bit too much shading, but it's okay. And I kind of got to make a call if I want to leave all the parts white or just the highlights, but I think I'm gonna come in. I feel like the discrepancy between the white and the brown is a little much. So I'm gonna come in, that's perfect. I was hoping I'd get a little bit of red on there. Then I'll come back in with a paper towel and kind of pick up the highlights a little bit. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna quickly come through. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Cool, I wanted some of that red in there to kind of marry it together and then I'm gonna come in, perfect. I mean, the skull really also is a Christian symbol. We never really talk about that, but it definitely is one. I love the image of the skull underneath the, the crucifixion when you get that going. Ugh, such a good look. Let's see, maybe I waited a little bit too long, but it's okay. I'll come back in with some white if I decide to do it that way. And now I wanna paint in some fall leaves and stuff around this skull. I wanna get that, we haven't gotten that deep red. I want that thick red on the canvas right now. This is gonna be like fire engine red. It's not exactly what I'm thinking though. You guys know the color I'm talking about. I'm talking about like deep red. I wonder if this red brown would do it up a little bit. Circle looks almost like an orange slice. Yeah, it does. We're gonna paint some leaves in there though. I probably missed a few super chats while uh... someone talked about the Fatima movie. Yes, that's true. Sometimes I can't help but feel like all this the legalism is kind of dumb. Yeah, it's interesting, you know. I mean, we talk about it a lot on here, but I think there's a balance. There's a balance between like the mystical and the legal, you know. It does matter sometimes, and then sometimes it can become like pathological, like obsessed about it so much. There's definitely a, a time and place for it, we can say. So I want this deep red. Let's see if I let's see if I'm gonna get the color that I want here. Yeah, kinda, it could be a little darker actually, but it'll be okay. So I'm gonna paint in some of these leaves around, I'll come in with red. And then, you know, it actually would be kinda tight to do like a fade. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we'll come over here and I'll do a fade coming down both sides. We'll see how much of a fade we can get going. The gradients that you get in nature in fall, talking about getting inspired by nature in terms of color and stuff are the best. It is the most killer, honestly. Um, if you really can just go outside and kind of see things with like new clear eyes, you know, the gradients you get in fall are insane. I mean, even on this bush, literally, literally there's this like tiny little stubby bush right outside the studio window. And the way the fall colors, you know, I, th I think of it as like God doing it. I think of it as like the artistry of like the divine. So it's kind of like how I phrase it to myself, but like the way it fades between certain colors that you wouldn't normally expect there to be a clean fade between, like this bush outside my window, it's, it goes from red to green. 
but it's in like the craziest way. You know, if you really like look at it and you see the way the red goes to like orange and then it goes to this like deep brown and then there's like these yellows and then it fades into green. It's so awesome, dude. Um, and the trees, sometimes when the trees are orange and green, if you really dig in there and even if you're not a painter, you can kind of imagine like, oh, if I was going to paint that, you know, like what colors would I need? You know, you can find a tree that's green and orange and it almost has like, you know, 500 different like colors in there. It's pretty awesome. I'm playing a really stupid, dangerous game right now, mixing right next to the black over here. Because if I get any black in it, it'll just like destroy my whole project, but it's okay. And I'm going to try and rock this little fade right now, going from red into the yellows. Or maybe just yellow-orange. Of course, I'm doing it on a yellow and orange background. This is also something that happens when you start pushing like color schemes when you're painting. You know, like in my mind, I'm like, okay, I want this to be straight red orange because we're going fall colors but now I kind of have like red orange on red orange you know is it the best color in the world so I'll probably just come back and outline it with the skull color and then so it'll look really muddy for a minute but then once I outline it it'll it'll be a nice like subtle fade so just stick with me for a second just trust the plan momentarily and I will deliver but you have to trust the plan and I'll kind of speed it up a little bit just keep it, keep it moving. Okay, cool. Let's come in here. Probably get two more leaves in like this. Perfect. Someone's chilling for me in the chat. Twice as many viewers as likes. I know. I gotta. I gotta pull the YouTube shield. I gotta pull the. Hey guys, make sure you like and subscribe. Really helps me out. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if it really helps me out. But, uh, I guess I should say that. Okay, so orange, then we'll go into yellow orange, and then we'll kind of come back and outline it. Sometimes when I'm painting by myself, I will spend like a heinous amount of time like making like a perfect fade, but I'm not really trying to do that right now. And boom. So what were we talking about? Yeah, I was talking about the SSPX movie. Yeah, and it was pretty cool, man. Um, I find that whole story and everything, the whole situation so riveting. Um, actually, it was kind of interesting because I pulled up some videos on YouTube about, you know, just different kind of stuff in that vein. And a bunch of them were from this church that's like 45 minutes from my house. It's a really random coincidence. Coincidence. Cool. So we're going to come down here. And I actually have never been to a traditional Latin mass yet. So I'm definitely going to check that out. The whole Corona thing is harshing my vibe so much, man. I got concerts I want to go to. I want to go see choirs. I want to go to church. <laughs> I want to do stuff. But it's harshing my vibe, man. And, uh, you know, even if, I, even if I'm like, well, you know, forget it. I don't care. I don't care if I get sick. I just don't want to get a positive diagnosis because then it's going to really complicate some other things for me. So I kind of have to care. It's kind of whack. I know you like can't see these leaves right now, but in literally one second, I'm just going to outline them and then we'll be good to go. And then we'll put something on this dude's head. Maybe we'll put a pumpkin up there or something. Thank you for bearing with me. I thought that the the fade I was doing would be more visually intense, but I didn't realize I was doing it on the exact color. So a uh, little bit of a miscalculation, but it's okay. It's okay. So I'm going to grab this burnt umber, and we're going to come in, and then we'll kind of get back into chaotic painting world. So let's see. Can I just come in and outline this? I think I can. Oh yeah, I definitely can. That's exactly the look I was going for. Perfect. So you can see when the colors are touching, it almost just looks like nothing. It almost just looks kind of like a smooth, like mushy gradient. But once I outline it a little bit, we'll, uh, we'll get it going a little bit. And as I'm picking up, so I'm painting wet into wet. It's going to pick up a little bit of the color and the, the line kind of becomes softer. So. I don't want that to happen too much. Nice, boom, I got another super chat. Thank you, Prag. I'm once again humbled by the super chat. Trust the plan, Owen Q Cyclops. Yeah, that's me. Trust the plan. Okay, so we got this going on over here. It looks pretty tight, but I wanna get back into chaotic, crazy watercolor land. You can see we kind of adjusted too much. I flipped the steering wheel too much in like crisp painting direction. So once we paint these leaves in, this will be sitting in the middle. 
as the crispness and we'll kind of just get back to uh, back to chaotic world. But you can see it's hard to strike that balance. One minute you're like literally spilling ink out of the bottle and it's making a mess and it's awesome and the next minute, see I can't even really get up here but it's fine. It's kind of cool if everything's not totally perfect. Boom, and we'll just kind of drag that out. Perfect, it's good enough for me. Okay, what are we gonna put on this dude's head right now? I'm kind of torn between pumpkin and something else, but I think we should uh, get the pumpkin going. And if anyone wants to me to see something in chat, by the way, just remember that I, if you don't tag me, I'm not gonna see it because people are talking in the chat. It's totally cool, I actually like it, but I can't read the whole thing while I'm painting. Okay, so let's get it going a little bit back with the fat paintingness. I'm just gonna come in Get kind of like a pumpkin up here. I'm just gonna throw it in like fat painting style. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Almost like maybe it's not even like crisply painted. It's just gonna be these like fat brush strokes. Yeah, that's perfect. And then I think within there, maybe I can come in with a little bit of like a lighter yellow, like a lighter shine on the pumpkin. I guess it'd be better to come in with a darker. No, you can't. Okay, I'm gonna grab the paper towel. Perfect. Perfect. Let's see, maybe I can get like a little bit of a shine in here. Yeah, that's perfect actually, it's perfect. And maybe I'll get what I wanted to do. I'm trying to get maybe a little bit of just like a darkness on the pumpkin, like a dark side. Grab a little bit, this is the color I want. A little bit of the red over here. There's actually a ton of pumpkins outside my house because I live with a woman <laughs> who puts very nice, lovely little things all around my house. And in fall, it's pumpkin style. Literally every time we've gone shopping, the supermarkets have pumpkins. You can't even see what I'm doing. Right, what am I doing? I'm getting stuck in the sudden muck again. And we'll come home like with the groceries and then also with like a bunch of pumpkins. Okay, so I wanna get back into, there we go, perfect. That looks tight actually. That's what we're going for. A little bit of the dry brush fat element. Okay, um, you know, honestly what I'm thinking would be tight is, so we have this huge expanse right now, right? Uh, Arthur Flack said, can you tack? I don't know what tack is. I don't know what tack is, but if you tell me, maybe I can. Uh, okay, so we have all this space over here. Um, I wanna do something with it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna grab all this orange I have over here and I'm actually just gonna paint in a larger skull, but I'm gonna make it facing this way. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. And I'm gonna come in with the teeth up here. And then often when I paint a skull like this with the fat lines, I like to come up and you, you can actually feel the side of your head. You can feel there's this kind of like fold that comes up and that designates the side of your skull from the front of your skull. You can actually feel it if you touch the side of your head right now. Perfect. Oh, Arthur said, can you talk about the skull as a Christian symbol? Yeah, definitely, dude. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it represents death. That's like a huge part of like the fallen world and stuff. But for me, when I use the skull in my art, I'm really thinking of uh, when you see like um, an image of Christ crucified and then down below the hill is a skull underneath him. And in some representations, I'm stepping a little bit out of my realm from art into the theological aspect of it. But I know about the art aspect, but not necessarily the theological aspect as much as, you know, someone with a master's of divinity would, but yes, yeah, so you see Christ crucified and then under the hill is like a little skull. And it's actually pretty cool in like Eastern stuff. Um, it'll be like, uh, like in this black realm, like almost underneath the hill sometimes, uh, Eastern, like maybe Greek or like Russian paintings even. And it's Adam's skull underneath there. So it's pretty cool because it's like this, this hill, with the uh, death of the first man with his skull there underneath the uh, hill where Jesus is crucified. And uh, 
it's called Golgotha, right? And then I'm pretty sure Golgotha translates into something that has to do with a skull. But now I'm just, now I'm not actually sure about that. Um, so for me, I always like visually imagine, you know, like the blood of Christ, like coming down onto this skull of like the first man. And like, you know, I feel like something that's not really hit as much, at least, you know, in like pop Christian stuff. I mean, what does that even mean? But like, is kind of the like redemptive, uh, what am I trying to say? Sort of like how Christ's blood interacting with the earth is this almost like uh, super physical redemptive process. You know what I mean? Like not in like a pagan way, but you know, I like visualizing his skull, his blood, like, you know, coming down the hill, like hitting the skull of like the first man down there and kind of just like, obviously like, radically altering the whole human experience. So for me, whenever I see the skull, it's kind of a very long-winded way of saying, uh, it makes me think of Adam's skull that is in some ways literally or figuratively like redeemed by like the blood of Christ. Uh, I also always think of monks and stuff like that. I've seen pictures of monks where like, you know, there'll be a room almost just full of like all the monks' skulls and everything like stored away somewhere. Uh, so it's basically a very long-winded way of saying it's like the death symbol, you know? That's obvious. Everyone kind of like intuitively knows that, but it goes a little bit deeper than just being like, oh, it's a skull. It's like a pictogram, like for death, you know? Cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, Golgotha means place of the skull. Actually, I was hoping that Peter specifically would let me know if I was right about that. Uh... Spoon of Salt, he said, hi. Golgotha and Calvary are both words meaning skull. Yeah, that's what I thought, actually. I just wasn't totally sure. Okay, so we'll talk more about that. Um, other fall things, and also Memento Mori style, is tree. Dead tree. So let's get that going. And I want to deploy another brown right now. If anyone has other fall stuff you want to let me know in the chat, let me know. Because otherwise, I'm just going to keep hustling along. I'm thinking about this raw umber, but I'm also thinking about the burnt umber. It's interesting because I never really dig too hard into the browns, like for line work and stuff, but it's so fall. I feel like we should. So let's kind of just, this is burnt sienna. Will I regret using the burnt sienna? I don't know. Let's see. But before I throw that down, actually, so I'm thinking about, you know, everything we've talked about, we do need to get some blue, I think, in for like a sky kind of situation and the blue that we choose is going to make a really big difference one way or the other. I kind of want to use cerulean blue. This green blue I think is probably going to be the move. So I'm going to come in here. Okay, let's make some good decisions right now. Let's see. I actually, I wonder if I have, yo, hold on one second because this is totally worth it. I wonder if I have one of the blue inks down here. Yo, I do. Oof. Let's do it. I was going to use this green blue. So you can see that this is like a very green blue. I know that this will look good. So maybe we'll use it over here. But I'm wondering about this dark blue. I call this Virgin Mary blue, actually. I actually ordered this specifically because I was doing some kind of Virgin Mary drawing stuff and I wanted to have it. The drawings came out sick, by the way. I will post those eventually. But for now, I think that the blue with the orange could be really sick. Because we can't just use, you know, it's kind of like, I always, whenever I'm working on a picture, we have what's called dumb colors, and then we have what's called like smart colors. So like the dumb color version of what I'm doing is like, oh, it's fall. So we only should use red, orange, and yellow in the picture. But then when you're actually making it, you're like, all right, well, we can't just have the whole picture be only, oh, that's pretty cool actually, be only red, orange, and yellow. So you kind of got to like smarten up the colors a little bit. Smarten, obviously not being a real word. And I think that this dark blue might really kind of set it off. Memento Mori, fall, death, night, kind of all goes together. I'm going to fix up that pumpkin really quick. Although this does look really sick if you want to just take a look really quick, but I am going to dry it up. It's going to dry it up a little bit. Okay. And let's see, I'm really making this very wet because I want it to spread out naturally. But let's see how it goes. Apples are an underrated fall symbol. Yeah, true. Hourglass, scythe. Okay, yeah, true. At least around here, birds, especially geese. Yeah, actually, I drew a bunch of geese recently, and it was really cool. Okay. Uh, let's just see how it goes. Yeah. It's, that is exactly what I'm talking about. It's 
Let me get this in here. I want it to just spread more. I want more of that effect. Can I even just tilt this a little bit? Yeah, it's not really gonna do what I want it to do. Okay, I'm gonna do kind of an advanced maneuver right now because I'm gonna simultaneously bring the bring the blue out, but I'm also gonna try and mix in the cerulean in here. But the cerulean is dry in here, so I have to like literally like poke in with the wetness. Let's see, let's see what I can get going here. You'll also see that the different pigments, they kind of have like naturally different levels of saturation, and the cerulean is really kind of dull. So I feel like it'll perfectly kind of go with this uh, bright blue that we have over here. We'll kind of balance each other out a little bit. Really weird noise. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. Okay, perfect. I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit. And this streak is really cool, but I don't know, I guess I'll leave it for now. I didn't really get, it's interesting, the lighter colors, like the orange and stuff, really did like kick up like really hard, you know? They really did like spread really hard, but I didn't really get that effect from the dark blue too much. I could drop in one of those colors right now. Kind of, that's kind of tempting, actually. I think I'm gonna do it in the spirit of pushing the color visual situation. Let's just do it. I'm just gonna drop it in right now. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes you really get the fade and sometimes you really don't. What I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna take this paper towel and I'm just gonna, I'm almost getting the fade. I feel like I almost shouldn't interfere, but I have to because that's just what I wanna do. Yeah, wow, that's a really good call. It's really cool actually. And then maybe I'll do the same thing going down. I'm loving this, these yellow streaks up here. It's really tight. I'm gonna do the same thing going down. Not exactly as elegant, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Cool, this part remained perfect. I kind of fucked that up, honestly, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. Can't win them all. Cool. Man, that was, that was really satisfying. And, uh, you know, I'm always pushing people to, like, do visual and creative stuff. I'm going to paint the moon in here while it's wet. Moon disappears, come back, comes back. Also, a merry symbol. If you've been here, you, you know about the moon. Um, but, yeah, I'm also always pushing people to be creative and stuff. And you can see, you know, even just interacting with the colors, you know. I say this every week, but it's so satisfying, man. You know. Stressful job, stressful day, but... Then you have this like zone where it's just pure creation, you know. It's such an such an awesome release. Uh, okay, let's see. It's gotta go this way. And how am I gonna play this? Do I want it to be small? Do I want it to be big? I'm kind of just gonna go for it. Yeah, that's fucking dope. I'm just gonna leave it like that. That looks tight. And I'm gonna drop in some stars too. I'm gonna get a little bit of the blue. Like I'm mixing on the fucking paper now. Sorry, try not to curse so I can keep my G rating. Um, I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of the stars. Not too many. I love the like white dot on the blue visual effect, but it can get kind of cheesy if you push it too hard. Oh, nice. That was a good one. One more. I think we need one more right there. Uh, I want to keep putting in more. Uh, yeah. oh, they're too close. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. And I'm remembering that, of course, the whole point of me putting it in the sky was that I wanted to get a dead tree in here. So easy to forget. Uh, and look, you can see over here, so I was going to initially use this color. It's called Burnt Sienna. It's like the richest um, brown. But you can actually see, I don't know, the copperiness with the, now we got the dark sky. So I'm gonna go burnt, I'm gonna go burnt sienna, a uh, burnt umber. That's the line work that we used over here. Just so you get a feel for talking about pigments if you're watching the show, there's two brown pigments. There's sienna and there's umber. This is review for some people. There's sienna and there's umber. 
The burnt ones are red and the raw ones are yellow. So the burnt ones are red like fire, the raw ones are yellow like the yolk of an egg, which is raw. So you get burnt sienna, raw siam, raw, um, sorry, you get burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw sienna, raw umber. So if you don't know, it sounds like I'm talking about like an infinite number of pigments, but there's actually only four of them. And uh, I could have used a smaller brush here, but I didn't. So I will live with that decision. I'm just gonna come down. I'll kind of figure out how I want to address the bottom over here and stuff. It's still actually pretty bright. I actually would like it to be darker, but it's okay. And because it's so dark, I'm, I kind of have to go with this like more graphic tree. I was thinking maybe I would, you know, change it up and kind of, I really want to get that background color in there. That's kind of what I was going for. I'll address the bottom though. I'm not aggressively feeling the bottom, but I can kind of like dry it up a little bit like that. Almost, but then, you know, then I made it too light. Let's see how, let's see how it goes. But yeah, it's so dark that uh, I feel like I had to go with this kind of graphic one. I was thinking maybe I can make it look a little bit more like a real tree, get some of the smaller branches in there, but it's all good. And this whole thing is a vehicle anyway, just for the color of the leaves anyway, so. So I'm going to switch over to my smaller brush. And let's see, I kind of want to do the same thing with a fade like I did in the middle, but I don't want to get stuck in there, you know. Uh... What's the word? Like tick, 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 like all the little details and stuff. So let's just come in and do it fat style. So I'm just going to throw in some fat colors. And this is real Bob Ross hours because I don't know if it's going to look good or not, but you know, it's fine. Let's just go for it. I'm just going to come in. And what I feel like I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down these like bombs of like fat pigment and then I'll probably just come in and wash over it and, uh, kind of just make like a fog. I want to kind of create that effect back here where like you see one of these fall trees and it's like like an explosion of like different color opacities and everything has just like gone off. I'm gonna grab this yellow and it'll be really tight if the moon dries before I lay down all these colors back here because then it'll be like on a layer behind but if it doesn't it'll be mixed in you know we're just gonna see how it goes. And you can imagine, like I said, I don't want to get us lost in the situation right now, but if you really sit down and make like a really painstakingly perfect gradient, you know, like if you really just mix like a, it's really satisfying if you just mix like a drop in each time, because then each leaf, you can't actually tell the difference, but over a big tree, then you can see the whole difference. So you can get really like scientific and like calculating and it's very satisfying with the gradients, but trying to move things along for us. So let's see, how do I want to just kind of set this off a little bit? I am going to grab this brush. Let me get the brown off of it. What's my opinion on tattoos, especially ones of Christian imagery? Are they evil? That's a good question. Uh, I don't really think tattoos are like evil in and of themselves. I'm not like that hardcore. Definitely not. I've done a few tattoos for people, not actually like putting them on their bodies, but people ask me to like design a tattoo for them and I didn't really think much of it, to be honest with you. I mean, like in a way that I didn't really think like, oh, this is bad. Should I not, should I not do this? Um, uh, so I don't really have a problem with them. I never got any, but no, nah, they're like evil or anything like that. I think it becomes pathological when people get like kind of like sick imagery or like really weird stuff tattooed on them. I think that's like pretty obvious. Um, for the most part now, it's like a cultural thing, right? It's a little bit harder to get the effect I wanted than I thought. I'm kind of just gonna, let's see, let's kind of just see what happens if I like push this a little bit over here. I actually kind of do like how that tree looks. It's kind of cool. But I want the edges to be a little bit more. Yeah, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, see, why did I put that stroke in? It was perfect. It was perfect, and then I ruined it. Yeah, that's tight. Actually, this stroke looks good, but I have to stop. But I can't stop. I can just literally cannot stop. There we go. That's perfect. How's that look? Yeah, that looks tight. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so we got a really good vibe going on right now. Um, let's see, now I'm kind of like, 
you know, pausing. This is that part of the painting. So like, I feel like the paintings, even though they're different, do get like a rhythm as we've been like working together. It's the part where I'm like, okay, you know, we're 40 miles on the 100 mile journey, maybe less, maybe more, but I just want to zoom out and just see how I want to start playing things. I really love this area. I like how this is going on. I feel like I'm going to need to get something down here. Maybe like a, what would be cool down here is like a big dead leaf, just like a huge one. That's kind of like breaking up the space. That would be kind of tight. It could be like Venetian red, actually. That would probably be the perfect color. That's probably what I'll put in next, actually. Uh, it means I'm going to have to get something over here and then something up over here. Jack o' lantern would be tight. Let's see, does anyone say anything, anything in the chat? A good jack o' lantern idea? Yo, actually, I wasn't tagged in that post, but I did read it. I was thinking about posting some good jack o' lantern ideas. I've made some fucking sick ones. Oh, I cursed again. Shame on me. Uh, I've made some really sick ones um, that I've posted on Twitter over the years. So, Let's see. Okay, I'm going to throw down like a big dead leaf, and I'm going to hope it kind of breaks up the space over here a little bit. I guess maybe I'll maybe I'll try and make it a little bit of like a pointy leaf. Okay. And then I'm going to try and bring out that Venetian red color and set it up as the ground over here. It's kind of the plan I have going on right now. And I want to heed my own man this, this paint's really hard to get out of here. I want to heed my own advice from before. I don't want to totally release us into chaos nor do I want to get stuck in like the little fussy details. Man, I'm really feeling how this came out over here. I know it's just kind of like a random painting. It would have been perfect if I pushed the color out over the moon just a tiny bit. I kind of want to get back in there and do it, but I feel like I shouldn't. I really want to. I just, I can't resist. I can't. I literally just have to do it. I just gotta do it. Oh, but no, it's not really. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's, that's actually doper. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to bring this Venetian red in here, and I'm kind of just going to freeform like a, a really fall leaf. I always go with the summer leaf. I always go with the teardrop shaped leaf, but so it's a little risky. It could look whack, but you know, it's okay. It's okay, because I'm not scared of that. I don't have fear of messing up on camera because, you know, that's just how it has to be. Okay, so... Ugh, it would be cool if it was like turned up a little at the end, but I'm worried that's going to be like too, I, I really can't tell if that's too like drawing, if it's too graphic, if it's not going to read well, but I'm just going to go for it because that's what I want to do and I'm going to do it. I'm going to put a little cut right in there. Perfect. Okay. So that's like the upturned front of the leaf. And uh, I feel like it really matters how... Well, I'm like anticipating like the skeleton of the leaf, you know? So I'm actually just gonna put in this thick line. That's like the fat stem of the leaf. Yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. Because without penciling it in, which obviously I never do, it's kind of easy to get lost, you know? Because you have these big cut edges. I'm making one of those leaves. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Where Kind of come out a little bit like that. Yes. Perfect. Man. Looks great. No risk, no reward. I really pay it off. I might not even fill in the color. It kind of looks dope. Just as like a line drawing. Oh. Yeah. Man. Yo, I am feeling that addition to the picture. Oh. Dude. Yes. Sometimes it just happens. Not a huge deal, but it's one of those moments like I'm always talking about where, you know, when you don't know what's going to happen, you kind of can step like a little bit further into chaos and bring something cool back. Paging Dr. Peterson, if you want to come on the show, come through. That was definitely one of those moments. And now I'm going to try and pull this color out. So I want to pull out that red. I might even need to boost it a little bit. I just need to boost it a little bit. And come in here a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Night shift vibes. Yo, you're actually working night shift. That's awesome, dude. I feel you on that, man. I feel you on that. Tell us what your job is if you want, or, you know, you don't have to, obviously. I'm very, like, sensitive about visual stuff. I mean, uh, optic security stuff. But, yeah, up until recently, I was working night shift at this, uh, I was kind of working at, like, a deli, basically. That's, like, kind of what it was like. 
<laughs> I was working the night shift and it was such a vibe, man. I've been like a cashier at so many different jobs in my life. It's so, like I really relate to that a lot. And the comic I'm working on it in Morningstar 99, the guy works at like a gas station. And uh, that's part of why, because I feel like I've worked those jobs so many times. It's like such a vibe. So if you're watching this on your night shift, that's very flattering for me because I, uh, well, that's a big part of my vibe. I'll put it that way. 12 hours overnight, cybersecurity. Yo, that's crazy, actually. That's actually a very different manifestation of the night shift vibe. That's interesting. Because I'm used to like being out at like a cash register, like dealing with customers and stuff. Yo, this came out sick, by the way. I'm actually going to leave this white edge just because... Nice. So real digital vibes. Yeah, that's really interesting, actually, dude. I'm actually intrigued. I'm intrigued. Uh, someone said thoughts on Taylor Marshall. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe I will answer that. Okay, before I answer that, though, um, we're moving along. We're killing it here. This is this is great so far. Uh, I'm loving like the crispness versus like the craziness, but I've got to make a really good, powerful decision for what's going on over here. Let's say we had some good we had some good memento mori suggestions. Apples, yeah, apples is really tight. Apples is tight. I'm thinking about jack-o'-lantern, but then, you know, it doesn't that kind of put us in like a weird, you know, then we're kind of in like a very different territory. You guys know what I'm talking about? Apple, apple is good. I'm thinking about that. I mean, that's how we can get the red in. I feel like, you know, I really think of the months as having different uh, color energies, and we're not really in October right now. We're almost... We're kind of in September right now, to be honest with you. We need that dark red. I have the spectrum red. So my hesitancy, if you've watched the show, you, just, you know what I'm talking about. The spectrum red, that's not a pigment. Everything I've been using so far here is pigments. Um, so I kind of get hesitant when I see like, ah, spectrum, what is that? So this that means, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, that means they mixed a few pigments together in here. In fact, you know, this is a review again for some people, but... So you can see, actually, I don't think I need to refocus the camera. You can see, and if you can't see, you can trust me, it says pigments PBR25 and PR170. So this is two different pigments mixed together, and I have no idea what those are. But if I grab the cadmium red, this is just going to be one pigment. It better be. Yeah. Pigment PR108. So this is just one pure pigment. I know how it is. I know how it handles. This is like getting like a Crayola marker. You know, what's, what's in there? You have no freaking idea. But it is a really nice dark red. Can you guys see it? Yeah, you can't see it. It's a nice dark red. Should I trust it? Should I should I go with my skepticism? Should I trust the spectrum red? Let's do it. Let's try it. I want that apple look. I'm not gonna trust it too much, so we'll just paint in one. Yeah, it looks pretty good actually. It looks pretty good. Painting a few apples over here. Apples are a very fall vibe. I went to this kind of like farm a little while ago and they had a bunch of cool apples there. These are the stories I prep for you guys. I'm like, oh, I better go to the farm, have a cool story for the Tuesday painting show. Uh, but how can we get that kind of, like, sometimes apples aren't just red, you know, they have ones that are like a few different colors. So maybe I can just paint in like the ghost color. And then, I don't want to make it green and red though. Sometimes they're kind of like yellowy and red, right? Yes, they're not really that color, honestly. I kind of need like yellow, like a yellow apple. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save myself over here and drop in the lemon yellow that we haven't used yet. Oh, yo, decayed or bruised apple. Yeah, that's the suggestion of the century right there. Let's see, can I save myself with this edge? Pretty good, pretty good actually. Let's see, I'm gonna try and pick up some of these colors. <clears throat> yeah, there we go, that's what we needed. And actually I'm gonna pick up some of this red too. It's a little bit too much. Just a little too much. Yeah, there we go. We're fixing it over here. I'm gonna have to come back in with the brown and like tighten this up a little bit. It's okay. Someone said pomegranates. I could just cope and say that this is like a pomegranate. You know, actually, I think I'm going to do something. I think I'm just going to wash this out. <laughs> and just come through with the red. I knew I shouldn't trust the spectrum red, but it's all good. And I'll paint something else over here. And we'll get the apple in in a different way. Yeah, I feel really good about that decision. Cool. 
So I'm gonna try and I'm just gonna wash this red out a little bit. I might even drop some of the red ink in here. And then we'll continue. Oh yeah, someone said, what do I think about Taylor Marshall? That's an interesting question. Normally I don't talk about specific people, but he's like on another tier of internet fame above me. So I know that he's not watching the show or won't be offended. Uh, he's a really interesting figure, right? In the whole scene of things, right? You know, um, he's an interesting figure in the sense that, you know, my, my wife reconnected with one of her friends and like basically long story short, the friend's mom like added her on Facebook and like her whole Facebook page was like all Taylor Marshall videos. And it's such a vibe. It's like if someone's like sharing Alex Jones stuff, I don't mean that in a negative way, obviously, but I mean like you see it and you're like, oh, I know what vibe you're on. You're like, oh, you're on that vibe. And again, I really don't even mean that in a bad way. I just mean that uh, in case people don't know, I love Alex Jones. So I didn't mean that negatively. What I mean is more like, um, you know, it, it hits a very specific pocket of uh, views and content and vibe and stuff like that. Man, this red is so light. I'll keep going about that, but it's so light. I want that deep red, but I'm not getting it. I'm not getting that deep, dark red, and I don't know why. Should I darken it up with like a blue? Should I darken the red up with like, is that what I need to do? We gotta solve that problem right now. Uh, where's my cadmium red? We're gonna do it. We're gonna do some emergency work right over here. So I got the cadmium red. I just really need that dark red in my life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna darken the cadmium red, but I don't know what to dark it with, darken it with. I could darken it with black. I feel like that's a really bad idea. I might have to darken it with some blue, as like unintuitive as that sounds. I have this indigo, and maybe that will darken it up. Uh, boom, there we go. Let's try it, let's see how this goes. So yeah, I mean, I watched, I've watched. i seen a bunch of Taylor Marshall stuff. I've watched his stuff sometimes. Um, I definitely don't have like negative feelings about him necessarily. It's kind of interesting for me because, you know, I feel like the like whole criticizing the Pope thing is very like, uh, I don't have like a knee jerk reaction about it. Like I'm not like, oh my God, you can't do that. Hold on, let's see, I wanna get this dark color. But sometimes it's a little bit like, I feel like kind of like going out of your way to do it is kind of like a bad look, but I don't know. You could definitely, cause someone could definitely say, well, you know, he's not doing that, you know, I'm not making like an iron iron case against the guy or something. So uh, I don't know. I check in on his videos sometimes. Okay. It's a little darker, but come on, right? It's not, I want that like dark red. And I'm just not getting it. He retweeted me one time and he liked one of my posts recently when I made the post about asking the, uh, that's pretty good. Ugh, is this really as dark as it's gonna get though? Don't you feel like, don't you feel like we can get darker than that? Don't you feel like we can get darker? But yeah, he liked one of my posts when I made a joke about asking the presidential candidates questions about Vatican II. He actually liked it, which I thought was freaking hilarious. Okay. But Taylor Marshall, if you're watching this and want me to come on your show, I'll do it. Or you can come on my show. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'm really pleased with actually how this whole little corner over here came out, but... Uh, we gotta kind of start deciding how we're gonna not wrap this up, but you know, what direction, what city we're gonna take this train to, put it that way, where we're gonna ultimately land our situation. I am feeling it though. It's nice and the red over here really balanced out the blue over here, so that was a good call. I could put another moon over here. That would actually be really tight. Yeah, I gotta do that now that I have that idea. Put a moon kind of going in the opposite direction. I check in on Taylor Marshall like when I want to know what that sphere is thinking about something, I guess you could say. He had a fight with that other guy, right? His like old co-host. I don't keep up with like internet drama. Oh, but actually we were talking about SSPX before. Wasn't there, I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Wasn't there a fight kind of about like SSPX versus like S FSSP or something? We're in like real hardcore like internet autism hours right now, but I think that's what they had a fight about actually. In case anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's like two different groups of uh, uh, priests, two different kind of sets of people that are skeptical of, 
I don't know, certain aspects of how things are going in the church, put it in the most like neutral way possible. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I like that actually. That's tight. Nice. Really dope. Okay. Um, but we need, you know, we can't, I need something, boom, up here, driving it home. Hourglass, hourglass is kind of tight. I could paint in the outline of the hourglass. That would be pretty cool, actually. Maybe that's what it is. I'm also feeling like we could get something in the eyes over here. I could get some kind of situation going on in the eyes. But, you know, I don't know. I gotta start making some powerful calls right now. Um, let's go with hourglass. Hourglass is, uh, is a good call. Let's go with that. So I'm gonna paint it in. I gotta decide the line color. I don't want it to be like obvious focus. Um, I also do feel like in terms of fall colors, uh, we haven't really hit the like warm browns. So we're not gonna get like deep dark October like I kind of wanted, but it's kind of just not how it worked out, honestly. If I made this a really, really dark brown, then I think maybe we would have gotten into like deep October, but whatever, it's the middle of October, so that's how it is. Peter said, yes, Taylor Marshall and Tim Gordon had a falling out because Taylor went to an X SS SSPX chapel for Easter. That's interesting. That's interesting that, that would happen. I wonder why. I mean, I can kind of like probably deduce why, but I mean, they're not, SSSP isn't like, they're, they're not really like schismatic, right? They're out, they're like, they're in union with Rome, right? Anyway, we don't need to go so hard into it right now. I certainly don't know the details. Anyway, let's throw it in. What I do know, I made a tweet about it though, is that SSPX sounds like such a cool name. <laughs> I'm sure it's not part of why they chose it, but you really can't underestimate how cool a name makes you. And I feel like that name is just awesome. SSPX and it ends with the S, I mean the X. Okay, I'm gonna come through. So I wanna paint this a little bit loose over here. Uh, I kind of want it to look like glass a little bit against the background. And I'm holding my arm in a weird way. So let's just see how this goes. Boom, perfect. I actually, uh, so I watch a lot of stuff while I'm working and I, I watched a lot of uh, videos by this priest. What was his name? Damn, I really forgot his name, man. Father Hess? Is that his name, Father Hess? I don't know anything about him. I'm not like endorsing him or anything. I never, I just don't want people to think I mentioned someone like, oh, and, oh, and so I should watch like 10 hours of this guy's videos. But what's interesting is that since we're talking about all this stuff is that uh, it was, there were old videos, right? So they're filmed like on like literally like a camcorder and they're like poorly edited. But you know, I watch a lot of people talking about a lot of stuff while I'm working. You know, if I'm working on night shift guy knows what I'm talking about. If I'm sitting at my computer for like, you know, eight hours working, I can watch a lot of people talk about anything. So it was interesting because I watched these videos and uh, what was cool about it was they were old videos, right? But they were each shot like two or three years apart and he was talking about the papacy and the church and everything. So it was really interesting because like I'd be watching for an hour and it would be like 1997 and this guy was talking about all this stuff, you know? And then uh, I don't think he would be very controversial. You know, he wasn't like set of a contest or anything. He was like a, just a priest who was like talking about it. But it was cool because he'd be talking about it, you know, and then the video would end and then the next video would start and it'd be like two years later, you know, and he'd just kind of like pick up and be like, yeah, so here, and then like, boom, the next video would be like two years later. It's pretty interesting. Uh, he didn't really have anything like crazy, like controversial to say or anything, but it's it pretty interesting. There's just something so like fascinating for me again, like I never, I don't purport to have any like knowledge about what the actual deal is but there's something just so fascinating to me about you know the whole sspx new liturgy changing the liturgy but you know the rules say this situation i just feel like so like um i don't know vexed isn't the word because vexed is like a negative thing vexed is like if you're vexed by something it's like you're like troubled puzzled by it but for me it's almost just like a like a profound like fascination. I almost feel like mystically like called to just like learning more about it. And like I said before, I was reading stuff about St. Pius X and you know, it's really cool. It's really cool. Like every now and then I puncture into a new kind of like cavern of like cool stuff. And I don't know, just so interesting, man. So interesting. If anyone has any strong thoughts about it, I'm actually curious. Um, 
SSPX has basically the canonical version of it's complicated, the it's complicated Facebook relationship status of the Vatican. Yo, that's really funny, actually. That's really, really, really funny. Uh, an even cooler name is SSPX Resistance, but they might be schismatic. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know anything about all the little subgroups and everything. So no choice recently. Am I crazy? I think the centerpiece skull would look good as neon green. That actually is crazy, but I admire you for saying it. But yes, it is crazy. But maybe we'll. Green, you can't get green in the October situation, but it's got to be like dark green. I mean, I'm not telling you you're wrong, but I'm not going to do it. No offense. Um, okay. I got, I'm trying to get this brush clean, and it's just not happening, so I'm wasting a lot of time. There's like some black in it or something. You can see there's like a little bit of black in it, and it only matters because I want to deploy a little bit of this yellow over here. So I'm just going to poke in with the big brush, with the fat brush. I'm just going to get a tiny bit of this yellow. Get it over here. So I'm going to throw down this yellow around here. Get that pale yellow. That looks good. I kind of wanted it to mirror up over here the uh, other yellow in the center. Nice. But yeah, part of the other thing if you're painting on your own and stuff is that you kind of can try like color combinations and things and you kind of, it really helps you develop your own style and stuff like that. Like when I'm painting on my own, I found a lot of like really cool color combinations I haven't seen other people capitalize on. Like especially copper, like if you have like copper metallic pigment, looks really good with like blues and things like that. You know, it's just part of my own style, I guess you could say. So I rarely use it, but it's a way to like sort of develop yourself. Okay, um, I'm gonna drop in a little bit of the, a little bit of the liquid pigment. Boom. There, boom. Mm, yes, boom. Cool. That was cool. Okay. This is looking good now. I can say this is looking good now. Uh, perfect timing. It's 844. We're just going to try and enter a little bit of... Um, what's the next move mode? I'm going to get a little bit of this butterscotchy. This isn't actually the butterscotch pigment, but I'm going to get a little bit of this color and put it on the glass. I kind of want the glass to have that like reflective feel, just a tiny bit. I'm gonna put a little yellow on here too. I'm probably gonna push it into like cheesy territory now, but it's fine. It's my picture, I can do whatever I want. If you want a really esoteric church, you should look into Eastern Rite Lutherans. <laughs> Yo, honestly, that sounds crazy. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, I actually, I will, I probably won't go but I will definitely check it out just to save my own um, obsessively niche theological tendencies. Okay. Man, that's crazy. I'm really glad you told me that that exists. If you know anything about it, drop it in the chat. In my humble opinion, best take on the whole Vatican II stuff is for Bishop Athanasius Snyder. Yo, actually, yeah, he's cool. It's from Bishop Athanasius Snyder. He's really cool. Basically, there needs to be a document definitively interpreting the council because of the confusion. Yeah, actually, that's a pretty woke take, actually. That's a pretty woke take. Um, and Bishop Athanasius Schneider is really cool. And actually, I saw him on Taylor Marshall's show. So for whoever asked me about that, he has seen some cool stuff. Um, okay. We're not going to solve that right now. But what we are going to solve is how we're going to wrap this up right now. Um, it's honestly looking pretty sick. I feel like we're in a really good spot right here. I'm kind of tempted... I'm tempted to call it, honestly, but I, I don't know. I'm really torn. I'm really torn. Part of me feels like I need to do, like, one other thing. It really is... Uh, all you guys window into my mind right now. We definitely... Well, obviously, definitely got the fall thing going, but um, I'm trying to think if I want to add another really dark color to push the October energy. October is really dark. Ugh. I feel like I'm gonna leave it, but just so you guys know what I'm thinking, because again, like I feel like the window into what I'm thinking is kind of part of the process. I probably am gonna call it, honestly, but it would be tight. If we got some, I'm, I'm not gonna do this because it would make it more September than October if you want the real like creative obsessive view but some like light green vines coming out of the pumpkin would be cool, but then we're pushing it more into lighter green, more backwards in time feeling. 
Dark brown could be hot, but I think I'm just gonna call it honestly. I'm trying to think of other stuff. The other thing is that like I la I landed in a really nice place, visually, uh, and if I start adding other stuff, it's gonna become more like Halloween. Like it would be tight to put like a face on here or something in here, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna do it, man. I think we're just gonna call it right now. Yeah. The more I'm looking at it, the more I'm like, yeah, this is dope. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? We have 10 more minutes. I'm going to peel this off and the last 10, I'm just gonna quickly get the Halloween energy out. Maybe it's a bad call, but we're gonna do it. I'm gonna use my, this is very esoteric studio. I have a pin from the 1980 Moscow Olympics right here. And it's just the perfect thing for me to peel off this top page with. Just gotta break this seal right here, so I'm gonna do it. See, so yeah, if anyone wants to ask anything or say anything else, or I'll read your comments or whatever. Uh, and then last 10 minutes, literally just super quick, I'm just gonna use the excess paint that I have and bust out quick, quick Halloween style transition into Halloween. This will be the last 10 minute. The outro, peel this off right now. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it's actually funny because speaking of Bishop Athanasius Snyder, I think on his website he has like a place you can like email him and he said he actually reads it. It's pretty cool. I like when people are have that of the people element to them. Boom! Okay. Super quick. Super quick. My floor looks cool because uh, it has all the paintings on it. All right, Halloween outro. All right, so I'll send you out of the show. Pick up some excess pigment here with the Halloween situation. I'm just gonna go for it right now. Should be kind of fun actually. Push the little kind of like Zen painting element over here. Nice. Come in. Uh, perfect. I'll take the orange actually. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw down the eyes. Uh, yeah, let's go with the big Halloween mouth. Not symmetrical, but it's all good. And what I really want to do right now, it's going to be a little crazy, but I am going to do it because I want to. Where's the orange? Dun -dun -dun -dun. Do you know if it's considered heretical to go to both Orthodox and Catholic services? Uh, or stuff until you settle on one? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I mean, you're getting kind of into like the law of the situation that I couldn't totally say, but I mean, if you're not part of the church, you can go, right? I mean, I go to a Catholic church, but I'm not like officially signed up or anything. Um, I know there are like really specific rules about like if you can get communion at like X, Y, and Z church or anything like that. So I'm definitely not the person to ask, but I mean, in terms of just going, I mean, you can just show up, right? I mean, they're not like checking your ID at the door as long as you're not like getting mass or something, I feel like it's chill, right? Did I move the camera? It's okay. I really wanna get the black and orange. Let's get it going, boom, yes. That's what we're talking about. Get some Halloween going on, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Oh, damn, I cursed again, sorry guys. Get a little boom, boom, yeah. I mean, come on, this had to happen, obviously, right? Obviously this had to happen. And I'm gonna take this big, nice. It's almost like Halloween abstraction in here. Uh, let's see, can I get a ghost in here? Can I get a ghost going on? What time is it? Nice, perfect. Can we get the ghost? Yes. Perfect. Father Malachi Martin used to give out his information on Art Bell's show. Yo, that's sick. That's really cool. Yeah, well, sometimes when I go on church websites or something, you know, it's like, somehow, sometimes a priest will have their phone number. I'm just gonna come, come up here and put this black up here. Sometimes a priest will have their phone number and I went on one church's website recently and it was like, if you have a spiritual emergency, call this number at any time. <laughs> And then it even said like, if there's no answer, just keep calling, someone will answer. And I was like, wow, that's pretty real. This dude out in like, you know, the middle of nowhere in this church, like has his number out on this uh, 
website. It, it says specifically like any time. If I don't answer, just call. Keep calling. I will answer. I thought that was really cool. Man, this is tight. Okay, uh, let's just keep it moving. Not really thinking about this one too much, obviously. I'm just kind of going to send us out on a little Halloween note. I'm going to get the moon. What else is Halloween style? Oh, yeah. Gravestone. Someone said gravestone. Can we get the gray moon in here? Yes. Full moon. We'll kind of just build it out a little bit. Get those loops going on. Yeah. I'm just going to pick up the white. And it's really wet, so I got to get the... If I want the white in there, I got to really pick it up. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. Nice. Uh, ground color. Let's just go with red. Let's just grab this red. Get this down here. Boom. Oh, the dry brush. The dry brush. Oh, it's literally all about the dry brush. Oh, dry brush is the name for this texture because it's dry. <laughs> Learn something new on the show every day. Get some brown in here because it's a little too saturated, but it's all good. We'll get this in here. Nice. I'm going to come back, get a little bit more dry brush. Oh, the dry brush. Ugh, I don't like that streak, but it's okay. Cool. Painting a gravestone. We've got a few more minutes left. Which is more dope for you, laying down fat colors and messing with color combos or playing with different kinds of brush strokes and textures? It kind of goes together. Those two things kind of go together. Um, they go together. They're not actually really separate. It's not really the best answer. Um, I mean, I guess they're different. I have, I like laying down the fat areas of color more, especially when they're bleeding into each other a little bit more. I feel like that's almost more of my strong suit in a way, because especially with these bottles and stuff like that, I used to go really hard on, you know, getting cool textures and effects and stuff like that. And, uh, so yeah, maybe I shy away from the texture thing just because I like things to be kind of crisp. I'm kind of a crisp visual guy, but depends. Those two things really go together though. Cool. I'm gonna come back in with the orange. Where's the orange? We've got a few more minutes. Someone said Halloween is a blue moon this year. Yo, that's sick actually. Okay, I'm gonna see how much I can get this orange back in. This is a good outro. It's a good outro for the show. I'm freaking loving the way this moon looks in the black. Oh, that's sick. I dropped the orange, it's okay though. We're going nuts in the studio. Um, let's see anything else we didn't talk about? I think we kind of hit it all. We hit it all, fall, memento mori, uh, skulls, Christian art, all the Stuff I've been thinking about. Oh, we're coming all the way around. Doesn't really look like a pumpkin. <laughs> it really doesn't look like a pumpkin at all. Because it's white. They do have white pumpkins, though. I saw one at the store. But it really doesn't look like a pumpkin. So come in. Can I get the... I'm, like, fighting the black. The Sumi black ink is so powerful. I'm, like, fighting it. And I'm getting some cool moments. Like, look at this. This is sick up here with the sky and stuff. That's really tight. Let's see, but how much can I fight the black? Sometimes you just can't fight it. Sometimes you just can't. Maybe I'll just kind of embrace it. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, but it's okay. Yeah, it's kind of cool, actually. Um, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. I'm going to come in with the brown. Maybe that's how we're going to end this stream. I'm going to come in. I'm going to wrap it up at 9, just so you guys know. It's 8.56. This is just like the outro. Can I get the stem? A little bit, a little bit, we got the stem. Yeah. Oh, boom, and we gotta put the mouth in. Technically it should be yellow or something, but it's not. I like the chunky teeth. I like the chunky teeth. Dry brush in. Pretty good, pretty good. Can I get some of the black in there though? If we're gonna have the mouth, it's gotta be a little black. It's officially Halloween in your life now. If you watch this, it is now officially 100% Halloween in your life. You can no longer pretend that it's not. 
by watching this, you consented to absolute Halloweenification of your life. That was pretty fun, actually. Oh, last thing. Perfect last thing. That's how we're going to wrap it up. It's 857. Perfect freaking timing. Has some serious airbrush rides. Andre Rublev would be a movie right up your alley. Yeah, I think someone mentioned that. I think someone mentioned that. Uh, that's the Icon movie. Isn't that, isn't that what the Icon movie is? If it's not, I'll check that out too. But I think that's the Icon movie I mentioned before. I'm just going to come down here. You know, we got to get it going on. We got to get it going on. This is the last thing we're going to paint today. Just got to get little skeleton man. Got to get skeleton man. Got to. You literally have to have it. You have to have skeleton man. Boom. Boom. With a little dead feet. He's dead. Sorry. That's how it goes sometimes. But don't worry, because uh, he was part of whatever church you belong to, so he'll be doing all right. <laughs> all right. All right, we got to get the bigger eyes, then we're done. Boom. Boom. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. All right. <laughs> that was really fun. That was really fun. Okay. That's it. We have done fall Halloweenification. We got three paintings going on. That was pretty satisfying. Uh, do we need to wrap up? I always feel like we need to wrap up, but I don't know if we do because you were here the whole time. You're always here the whole time, and I'm like, oh, we need to wrap up. But maybe we don't need to. We got this one. We started over here. Remember that? That feels like a long time ago. Look how good these grapes came out. Look, it's, it's incredible how well painted those are. <sighs> so that's it, man. That was really, really, really fun. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, I said it. I guess I would have to say it because I run the show, but I actually did mean it. I really do like hanging out with you guys. It's a really great time. I hope you have been enjoying the show. Soon we're going to return to Bible themes. I think we're going to push the Christian art thing. I think that's a really good angle to go down since we did that Vermeer painting, some allegory paintings and stuff like that. I'm trying to just clear off visually because I think it's cool to kind of see it on its own for a second. Um, so yeah, I'm really freaking amped. In the next few months, I have so much cool stuff coming out of the studio. I'm just amped. I'm not even bragging. I'm more like telling you like a friend. Like I'm just excited. I'm even knocking over stuff in here. What are you going to do about it though? So that's it. That is the middle of October fall painting show. We got two more October episodes. So I don't know what that means. We'll, we'll do something cool. We'll do something cool. But, but for now, we have achieved our goal of fall visualification. Thank you for coming through. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for the work I'm sure you're doing on your own spiritual life. It's kind of how I end the show now, I guess. Because now... We're going back to it. We're going back to the spiritual battleground of life. And I will see you guys on the internet where we all hang out. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for coming through. And I will see you guys on the internet. Bye.